Autobots, roll out! I'd like to take a moment to thank my channel members. Thank you. It's continued support like yours that keeps this channel growing. And if you haven't already, please consider joining today. Hello and welcome to That's Just Prime and today we're going to be taking a look at the Magic Square B46 Light of Victory and I love this toy. Originally released in the fall of 2022, this figure is available right now as of the time of this recording. It's available from multiple online retailers and retails for approximately $75 to $90 depending on where you get it. And uh, what this is, is Magic Square's second version of a Legends Optimus Prime and there is so much to love about this figure. Uh, their, their previous version, the Light of Justice, is one that I've reviewed before and, and it's a good figure. It's a beautiful, beautiful figure, but it's one that uh, wasn't very fun for me in, in terms of transformation. Um, this one is, it seems to have improved in most areas. From their previous version there's still a couple of things that the previous one did better and uh, we'll take a look at that here in a moment first let's take a look at the packaging um, now the packaging i'm gonna be honest not a lot to look at here uh, it's beautiful it's done in this really dark gray almost black and then you've got this very subtle and you just kind of have to angle the box just right to see it so you got the magic square logo up here at the top and then you can see some artwork in the background there of Optimus Prime opening up his matrix or opening up his chest to reveal the matrix. And then the matrix is right there in silver with some, uh, you know, just kind of some, some blingy action happening right there. MSB 46, Light of Victory down here, ages 16 and up, Magic Square, and then warnings on the back. And really not a whole lot to look at here when it comes to packaging. But that's okay because what's inside of the packaging is absolutely amazing. Now, I have already applied my Autobot stickers to this guy because that's just how I am. Um, I've had this guy for a couple of weeks now. And I thought about maybe holding off on putting the stickers until after I reviewed them. But I'm like, ah, I got to have the stickers on them. So there it is. <laughs> now, here we have Light of Victory in his vehicle mode. As you can see, again, it's an homage to Generation 1 Optimus Prime. The truck is approximately four inches in length by about an inch and a half tall. The trailer is about seven inches in length by about two and a half inches tall for a total of about nine inches long approximations there. And as you can see, this is just absolutely beautiful. Um, this is more of a cartoon color version, right? So you've got the the red. Um, it's, it's kind of like a flat red right there. But you've got some really nice light blue here on the windows. You've got that gray stripe going along the side and the front right here. You got silver on the grill, silver on the bumper with some gold and black details down there. You've got a, I love this. You got opening doors. Get in there. This is part of the transformation. You know, this is, this doesn't really accomplish anything other than assistant transformation. But the fact that you can open the doors, there's nothing in there. It's just a fist. But it's really cool that it has like an opening door like that. It's it, That's kind of neat. And you can do that on both sides. Silver gas tanks and then blue on the back right there. One another trailer, just a gray trailer with the gr light gray stripe. We don't have the blue and white details on this one. And then you got blue down here at the bottom going around the back. You've got all of the nice molded details here for the door. you got those latches there like you would see on a truck door. Red tail lights. And that's about it for the deco. Now, let's uh, let's take these guys apart real quick. There is something really, really neat here. Um, actually, let's do comparisons first. Then I'll take that off because there's something here. I want to show you how this latches together, which is actually really, really neat. But let's do comparisons first. Let's get those out of the way before we start taking this figure apart. And you'll see why in just a moment. So let's start with. The previous version from Magic Square, which was their Light of Justice, which I have reviewed here before. And um, Deluxe Baldwin actually made a very, very in-depth comparison with these two figures. I'll put a link to his video up here if you want to check that out, if you want to see what all the differences are. But here they are uh, side by side so you can see what the two of them look like together. Now, let's look at the one that I've recently reviewed here this is the new age david so you can see what the two of them look like together and this is another fantastic figure also i really really enjoy this figure 
a lot, but there you can see what the two of them look like together. One of the things that I really love about this figure is that it's got a longer trailer. I think that the longer trailer suits Prime a lot more than shorter trailers do. And then finally, let's take a look at him next to the Hot Soldiers Sky Pillar, uh, which I've reviewed here as well. Now, Hot Soldiers Sky Pillar has a very, very long trailer. I absolutely love that about this guy. Uh, but yeah, back when I first got this guy, to me, this was like the perfect Legends masterpiece. And it seems like every time a new Legends figure comes out, it just improves and they keep getting better and better. So there you go. You can see what all three of them look like together. Now, let's get into the trailer real quick because there's something really neat here. So I'm going to pop it off. And there's another accessory. This accessory comes with, uh, it comes already on the trailer when you get it. So we'll go ahead and extend these out real quick so that we can stand that up. So this comes with a fifth wheel attachment right there. And it's kind of weird. I think this could have been accomplished a little better. Now, as you can see, the truck, the back of the truck right there, it's, it, it's pretty plain. They've done a really good job of cleaning that up, but it, it, it kind of looks like it's missing something. So when you add the hitch, it looks really, really nice. Let's go ahead and tab that. And so it's just got the two little tab and slots. And we'll get that tabbed in real quick. There you go. That looks really, really nice with the fifth wheel. However, the tab or the, the hitch part right here, this is like a keyed hitch. It's a circle peg or a round peg with a little tab pointing to the front. And if you see the key right here, that's pointing to the back. So you can't just peg this on, right? Now there's that little hole in the front there and there's a little hole here. It would have been nice if there was a little peg. So you can just peg them in like that. That would have been nice, but there isn't. So as it is, to get this in there, you actually have to, <laughs> what I end up doing most of the time, and I untabbed it, of course, because I'm on camera, I untabbed it. I usually don't have that problem, is I do this. I <laughs> I, I pull this up, then I key the trailer in, and once I key the trailer in, then I end up turning the whole thing around. Let me try it that way. There, and then I turn the whole thing around, then I snap those back into place, and then I end up coming back under here and straightening out the feet, which seems like way too much work to try and get this trailer hitched on here properly. It, it just, I think that that seems like there could have been a better way of doing that. But that is an accessory that's going to come, that hitch right there, or that fifth wheel, that comes attached with the trailer. It doesn't come in the bag of other accessory parts, which I'm about to show you. Let's take a moment to talk about the accessories that come included, because he comes with a lot. So aside from the sheet of instructions, which is going to be obvious. We do get a figure card, and this is very, very thick plastic. It's almost like credit card quality plastic. So you got a nice piece of artwork right there, Magic Square Light of Victory, and then along the back, you got some stats. So there's that. Now, we've got a ton of hands. So he's, he's got hands already on him, uh, and they're just going to be the, the closed fist with the opening for the weapon, right? Uh, similar to this. So actually they're not closed. Th these would be the closed ones. So the ones that he's got on them are like, kind of like that, okay? But then you've got all of these other hand options. You've got open hands with these little joints right here. And these you can use to like open the chest when he's uh, getting the matrix out. He's got wide open hands. He's got closed fist, open hands again, and then karate chopping hands, and then some close, uh, some pointing fingers. So I haven't taken any off the, uh, off the sprue yet. I don't think that I'm going to use any of these. It's cool that these options are here. There's a lot of folks that love this kind of stuff. Uh, for me, this is just something that's going to go right back in the bag, but it's really neat that they include all of this. You're, you are getting a very good value here. Um, we've got Roller, of course, we're go, and we'll get in more into him once we get into the trailer. We do have this little hitch right here. So if you have Magic Square's Huffer figure, you would use this hitch right here for Huffer to be able to carry around the trailer or pull the trailer. So that's neat. Um, in no particular order here. So we've got, of course, we've got his weapon. We've got his rifle. And then we've got this blast effect right here, which plugs into the rifle. So you can have him firing. So that's really neat right there. So that's included. Uh, we have his jetpack. And we also have these blast effects for the jetpack. These can be added right here. 
So when he's wearing a jack pad, you can actually have him, you know, with black effects like he's flying. So that's pretty cool too. And I think these might also work on the rifle. So that also works there. So you got those options as well. The rifle comes apart. <laughs> so there's that. Why this rifle comes apart, I don't know, but it does. There it is. So there's there's that. Um, we've got his axe. Of course, we can, you know, with, as with all the hands that are replaceable, you can replace one of the hands with his Energon axe. We have a pair of uh, spare um, smokestacks right here. And I believe, let me check. I know I checked this a couple of weeks ago, but I've forgotten. So these are a little bigger, a little thicker, and just a hair longer than the ones that come included with the trailer. So if this is something you feel looks better, you can swap those out. We get this extra, let me see how I can go about grabbing this. We have an extra Optimus Prime head and I'll do my best to focus on this guy right here. And it's weird because it looks like a damaged head right there, uh, which is fine, except nothing else on the figure is gonna be damaged. So this head is gonna kind of look off, I think. So there's that. And then, of course, we have this Starscream head. So you can give him a Starscream head. We'll try and focus in on that as well. Come on. There we go. Very nice Starscream head. And you also get the shoulder pauldrons for Starscream. So you can actually have the, you, you can recreate that scene where Starscream was um, disguised as Optimus Prime. So you'd have the Optimus Prime body with the Starscream head and the shoulder pauldrons coming up over his shoulders, which is really neat. So that's it for the accessories. So moving on with the uh, figure itself, we'll go ahead and <laughs> tab that again. And I'm just going to leave the hitch or the fifth wheel attached to that because we're not going to need it here for the uh, for the robot mode. We'll open this up. So, of course, we have um, one of the things actually before I open this up, one of the things that I absolutely love about this. So you can open the open the back wheels up and then you're going to reach in here to pull the little ramp down and some, not all, but some of the Magic Square figures will actually fit in there in vehicle mode, which is nice. Not all of them, like the, I have the Mirage, which I have them in robot mode right now, so I can't really demonstrate, but Mirage won't fit. But Ironhide totally does, which is really, really cool. And of course, you've got Roller as well. Uh, you cannot fit Roller and a vehicle, unfortunately. I wish you could. If the trailer was just a touch longer, maybe you could, but as it is, uh, pick who's going to ride in there. But the fact that I can put Ironhide in there, I think is absolutely awesome. So we'll set him off to the side. We'll set Roller off to the side. We'll get these down. Now these are going to come out, of course, and then these are going to slide down just a touch on each side. We got the ramp down, we got the doors open, and then of course we can split this up. Now the trailer itself has a lot of molded detail inside, which is really, really nice. We don't have the little workstations back here. That's something that's sorely missing from a lot of these figures nowadays. I do miss the workstations. Now in lieu of the workstations, I do wish that they would have had little, maybe little ports or slots or something to put the accessories in there because as it is, we don't have anywhere to store the weapon or the axe or the backpack or a jetpack, anything like that in the trailer mode. It would have been nice if we would have had options in here. That is one thing that the Light of Justice did is that you could take roller and you can store the axe on the, bo on, on the bottom of roller. That was for the previous version. You can't do that with this guy, which is unfortunate. Since we have roller right here, we'll go ahead and take a look at him. And he's really nice. He's, you know, he's got pegged on wheels, but they are. I mean, this thing rolls super, super nice. Now, the back here, you can flip this up. And what you can do with this is you can hitch it up to the trailer. So this can actually pull the trailer. Remember the little hole I showed you down here at the bottom? This will actually peg right there. So roller can actually pull the trailer. The other thing that you can do with this little peg is if you look at his rifle, Prime's rifle, he's got these ports, one on each side. So you can at least carry his rifle in the trailer with roller. It pegs in sideways. It's not the best. I like it better, you know, because the rifle is sideways. I would have preferred that the rifle pegged into the back of roller, but as it is, at least roller can carry the rifle and store it in the trailer while he's in vehicle mode. But again, uh, maybe if there was a little peg on the sides so that you can actually peg the rifle to the side and maybe add the, 
you know, the jet pack and the, and the axe. You know, these, these are the kind of accessories that you kind of want to have on hand when you transform them and you want to put these on and off. So it would be nice for these to store properly somewhere on the, on the trailer. They can store in the trailer. You can just throw them in there and they're going to be rattling around, you know. So it'd be nice if, <laughs> if there was a place to actually secure them. Uh, but yeah, the, so there's, there's, there's the tracks in the center, which of course we expect that, so that's neat. But the fact that there's tracks on the side also implies that you can have vehicles there in, in a sort of a, of a repair bay configuration, which I think is super neat. This looks amazing. I absolutely love this trailer and we're not even done. We're not, I mean, we haven't even gotten to the figure yet. We're still looking at the trailer. Now, of course, we got a repair drone right here. The repair drone can come up. The repair drone is crazy articulated. So we've got articulation here at the bottom. We've got articulation at the center. And then we've got articulation here at the top. Ball joint here for the little radar. So that can come up. we got a ball joint here at the base of the arm and another hinge here. And then, of course, the claw can open as well. The little gun emplacements here, these can extend. And... I usually end up pulling one off because I, one of these is like super tight for me. And then roller here is getting ahead of me. <laughs> We're not ready for that yet. So you can extend those out. And then, of course, the canopy can also open. So you, if you had a, a figure small enough, you could fit a figure in there. Now, the other thing you just saw happening right there. This is super neat. So roller here, or not roller, the drone it's actually tabbed in. You see, you got two tabs here and you got two slots up here. This also does come apart. I don't know. Oh, I think I do know why. I'll show you why in a moment. But anyway, you can tab that off. There's two slots here. There's two tabs there. And then you can see there's wheels on the bottom. So you can actually flip these up. And then you could bring him down. And now you have a little repair drone that can actually leave the trailer and go out into the field and perform uh, repairs if repairs need to be done which is super super neat now this also comes apart you saw that just now so we can take that the the drone itself comes apart into two pieces like that i'm not sure what the purpose of that is but the drone can also come off the actual stand itself and you see we've got a thick peg which is where the drone was mounted but then you can also turn this and you got a thinner peg there this thinner peg accommodates the figure when it's in robot mode so that you can do like jumping poses or flying poses because this guy is super crazy posable. So you can actually use this as a bit of a flight stain or a jumping stain or a posing stain for anything you want to do with, with pictures. So that's that you got that option there as well. So that's really, really neat that they give you that. We'll go ahead and put this guy back into this configuration. Tab that back in there. And then we're going to put him in the standing up repair bay configuration which i love so much so we're going to leave him in this configuration right here and we're going to set this off to the side and we're going to start concentrating on the transformation for the figure itself transformation for light of victory is super complex and interesting so we're going to start right back here at the back of the legs and or the back of the truck rather we're going to lift these panels up and then they're going to be on a double hinge that we're going to move forward just like that just kind of get those up and out of the way come around the sides here we're going to take the whole gas tank right here this little red piece we're going to unpeg that and just kind of pull it out and out of the way we're going to do the same thing on the other side just kind of pull that up and out of the way and we can go ahead and split the back of the truck in half here because we're going to start working on our legs so this whole piece right here is kind of tab there's a small tab right there where the wheels are tabbed into we're just going to kind of pull on that and we're going to hinge. There's a double hinge right here. This whole bottom of the leg right here is going to hinge out. We're going to get it about halfway. And then we're going to take these wheels right here and we're going to start spinning these around. As we do, we're going to fold this tank in half. And then we're going to take the back half of the tank and fold it all the way behind the wheels right there. We're going to take our foot, go ahead and split this open and then split that open. And we're going to turn the foot around give yourself some room here we're going to take these wheels or on the little peg right there and we're going to push these in as far as they'll go once we do that that's going to allow us to bring the leg the rest of the way down on that hinge there's a small 
round peg on this side that you know you're going to be lined, you're going to be in place once you're lined up with that peg. Finally, we're going to take this panel right here. We're going to open this up. This opens in twos like that. And then we're going to bring this down. There's some really like these are odd shaped pegs right here or tabs right there. You can see those and you're going to tab these in here. And you have some pegs like that on the other side as well. Finally, take the little gas tank right there, flip it down to hold the speeds in place. And there's one leg done. So we'll repeat again on this side. We've got the panel up. We've got the leg or the wheels out. And we're going to start swinging the bottom of the truck down. Get it about halfway. Start working your wheels around. Fold the tank in half. Fold it in again. And you got to play with this hinge right here to give yourself enough room to push those wheels in. And once you've done that, then you can swing this the rest of the way. We'll open up the foot. Spin that around. And finally, make sure that this is lined up on that peg back, back there. Open these two panels, bring this down, and tab everything into place. Right there, tab it in place on this side, and bring the tank down. Everything is lined up, and there's pretty much the bottom half of the robot all done. So we're going to come back here, and this red piece on the back of the cab is actually uh, slotted in to this back of the waist piece right here. So we're going to take this and we're just going to slide it up. You can see there's a little T-shaped piece right there that actually slots into this slot right here. So we're going to get this down and then take this piece right here, flip it around, and now the bottom half of the robot is all done. We're going to start working on the top. Take your uh, smokestacks right here. They should be out. Usually I have them out for truck mode. Um, and then in for robot mode, and they just kind of move around on me. But you want these out, and you want to try and go ahead and let's do this. Let's open the doors. So get your nail in there, open the doors, and then fold the windows down. This is going to help us kind of get around some things here. Same thing on this side, open the door, and fold those down. Now, before I move further, let me point this out, because this is what I think is just absolute brilliant design on this on this figure and what makes this currently my favorite one of these all right so take a look at the windows for the truck the windshields see how they are flat and how the cab itself comes straight up on the front here when it gets to the windshields it angles back just slightly exactly like it did on the show that's the way the truck looked on the show however when he was in robot mode the windows had a different shape, right? Keep that in mind. That's going to come back. So notice that these windows are flat and angled back just a touch. Okay? So we got the doors open. And you want to take the arms and just kind of bring them out a little bit for now. We want to make a little bit of room here because what we're going to do is we're going to take the cab. Sorry, the, the, the roof of the cab right here. We're going to pull up on this. And this should also bring along with it. There's a bar right here in between the two windshields right so we want all of that to come up and what we're going to do here is we're going to work this let's bring this panel up take this tab push it up bring these pieces of the tanks up bring this up and rotate it and then bring it over and this whole top piece here is going to come up and over and we're going to work this up and over and around these smokestacks so you kind of got to Work it around like that. That's why you want to kind of split those up a little bit. And then once you've done that, you can just bring this all the way down and just keep it down here out of the way for the time being. And let's continue working on the arms. So we're going to take the arms right here and we're going to... These are actually tabbed inside here. So we just want to rotate these out, bring them out as far as you can. Open this panel up just a bit. It's on a double hinge. So you want to bring it up like that enough to allow you to rotate the arm while this panel is up reach in here things are tiny you're going to want to reach in there and bring the fist out and then using that hinge again we're going to just double hinge that over you'll see that there's a little round piece right there we're going to close all of that up like that take this panel close this up there's a small tab right there turn the arm around to line it up with the autobot logo right there and just kind of get it up and out of the way for now, the arm is done. So again, on this side, we'll bring the arm 
out like so. Move this panel up. Just use these, you work that hinge to get the panel up like that, which is going to allow you to straighten out their arm, reach in here, get the fist out. And then again, using this double hinge, bring that panel down. On the other side, we're gonna close that panel. And as we're looking at the top of the arm again, we're gonna rotate that to get that little arrow piece lined up. And there we go. There's the arms done and out of the way. Let's, uh, are we ready for the head? I think we might be. Let's go ahead and bring the head up and then up again on that ball joint and just leave that there for now. And we're gonna start working on the chest here. We're gonna take the windows. We're gonna open the windows like so. Take the, uh, the grill and this middle part of the bumper. We're gonna pull forward on this like this. All right, there are tabs. Let's see if we can show this. There's two tabs on the red portion there and there, and then there's another tab on the bumper piece right there. That's how all of this comes together. So we're gonna wanna unpeg that and unpeg that side, and then we can bring these down, close the door so that it'll fold up behind the, the, the headlight right there. So again, bring this down and fold the door to get it behind the headlight. And I think we can go ahead and rotate these for now, get them out of the way. Now. There's a piece right here under his neck. We're gonna wanna rotate this piece out like this. Get all of this out. Am I ready for this? There we go. Okay, so yeah, that's 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 what I'm doing wrong. So it comes up and then it pushes down and that allows us to bring the head up. Now check this out. This is probably my favorite part right here. These windows are going to rotate around so what was the window on the front of the truck is gonna flip around and it's now gonna be on the inside of the truck, right? But the windows remain the windows. The windows from the truck remain the windows in the robot mode. All right, we're gonna take this, uh, the bumper right here, we're gonna flip it around, showing our matrix right there. Take the grill, flip this up and over, and you can see that little peg right there. We're gonna go ahead and push this in all the way in like that, okay? and then we can close these windows. Now, this part here was really, really rough for me when I first got it, I had to work it loose. You notice there are, these, these are gonna rotate up as, as you expect, like that. And then they're gonna push up. You notice these little sliders here and here. So these need to push up to get them into place. And then when you transform him back into truck mode, you really got to work those down again in order to get those wheel wells to rotate again. And on mine, they were super, super tight, and I really had to work them up and down uh, to get them to slide. But there you go. You're going to slide the whole thing up like that. We can collapse the waist right there to get everything put together. Finally, we're going to come back here. We're going to start collapsing this. So you want this little bar right here. This is on a hinge. And we want this bar to sit right there where that little square is at like so, and then this whole thing's gonna come up, and you'll notice little tabs right there. That's where everything lines up there and there. And then again, the jetpack right here, he's got little tabs right there that are gonna go into these slots here. Get them all nice and straightened out. And there is our light of victory, Optimus Prime, in his robot mode. And here in robot mode, he stands approximately five inches tall. So again, Legends class, and this is this is just absolutely stunning. Again, I think this might be my favorite interpretation of this legend, uh, a Legends Optimus Prime figure. This this is absolutely stunning. And right away, I want to point you to the the windows on his chest. Notice, remember how before they were flat and angled back. Now they angle outwards, meeting at a tip right at the center of his chest, exactly like he did in the cartoon. So the chest actually shape shifts to accommodate for the way we saw him in the cartoon, both in truck and in robot mode, while the windows stay the windows. Absolutely love that. I think that that has just blown my mind about this figure and, and it's just so genius. Now, the only issue I have, there's two tabs there. It's supposed to tap together. It doesn't tab in great. I may, I may put a little bit of 
clear nail polish on them because as I move them around, you'll notice that he starts kind of popping off and whatnot. But um, if you wanted to replace the head, it's on a ball joint, so you can just pop it off and replace the head. And if you wanted to do the star screen thing, what you're going to want to do is pull these back, and then the star screen piece just slots in right here over this lip, and then you would close it back up. So um, I have those accessories already put away, so I'm not going to show them. But if you wanted to do it, that's how you would do it. And uh, now I can't close them up, <laughs> and I don't know why. Why is any closing? That's odd. That was odd. That was odd. Um, so yeah, taking a look at him all the way around. Check him out. He is absolutely clean. Per a, 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 a near perfect representation of Optimus Prime as we saw him in the cartoon. Check out that backpack. That is, that's the little jetpack there with the nozzles there and whatnot, the, or his backpack with those like those tank looking pieces. That is perfect. That is clean. There's no kibble, no real truck parts to to. to that are showing other than the grill and the and the uh, the windows there in the, in the smokestacks really is there any truck parts actually showing right and that's exactly how he should look he is absolutely stunning now articulation wise like i said head is on a ball joint you can tilt it angle it side to side a little bit side to turn side to side up and down shoulders can go forward and backwards all the way around they can go in and out there is also uh they they do have a little bit of a butterfly there Rotation at the bicep, bend at the elbow, and rotation at the wrist. Now, these are just uh, ball, like a little ball joints right there. So you just pop them in. And then if you had something like, for example, the axe right there, you could just take the little ball joint and pop that right back in there. So there you go. So there's, there's Prime with his Energon axe if you wanted to do that or if you wanted to change any of the other hands out. That's how you would do that. So, uh, and because they are on ball joints, of course, you can rotate the wrist and they have a little bit of wiggle up and down and whatnot. Rotation at the waist, legs can go forward. Let me move this out of the way. Little skirt here, um, piece out of the way. So there you go. Forward that far, back that far, in and out. He does have an ab crunch, I guess. If you use that hinge, the transformation hinge, you could sit him down. Rotation at the thigh, bend, double bend at the knee. Toes can move forward and backwards on these hinges. The heels can move up and down as well. And of course, you've got crazy, crazy, crazy um, ankle tilt for days. Absolutely stunning, stunning figure. Uh, let's bring a couple of his other accessories in right here. So you got the jetpack. And the jetpack literally just plugs in right over this. And, and that's all you're going to do with it. You just plug it in over that. And there you go. Now he's got his jetpack. You can add these here if you'd like. And now you got yourself. And, and again, you can move the head up like that. And there you go. You can get yourself a, a cool little flight pose right there. You see what I mean about my windows. I, I, I really do need to tighten those up. But there you go. Flight pose if you want to do that. Very, very cool. And again, this is this is one of those accessories that I feel like you want to keep this on hand. So it would be nice if there was a proper place to store this in the trailer other than just throwing it in there and <laughs> having it, uh, you know, banging around. And then, of course, we're going to give him this rifle. And again, for the rifle, you can give him the little blast effect right there. So if you wanted to do that, there you go. And I don't think there's a, a, a position, a bad position that you could put this figure in. Any way you stand him, he looks really, really nice. Uh, actually, let's leave his rifle, but let's take away. <laughs> keep taking off the barrel. Let's take away the, the blast effect. And we'll leave the rifle. Let's get him standing straight. We'll do a couple of comparisons real quick. I don't want this video getting too long-winded. Um, so, we have, let's start with the... The first one that I reviewed, which was the Sky Pillar. So let's look at the two of those together. And again, I, I, I keep saying this with all these Legends figures. When this guy came out, this to me was like a perfect, uh, near perfect masterpiece Legends figure. And every time somebody comes out with a new one, they make improvements and they just keep getting better and better. Um, still a fantastic figure, a great figure. Really glad to have this in my collection. It's just really cool to have all these different figures together. So there he is with Sky Pillar. Let's take a look at him next to New Age David, which is also a fantastic figure. Absolutely. These are probably my, currently my two favorite Legends class figures. 
Um, this one, I think, is my absolute favorite so far. But there you go. So there's the two of them together. And then, of course, let's look at him with his predecessor, Light of Justice. So you can see what the two of them look like together. And I think this guy, uh, the new current Light of Victory, has blown Light of Justice out of the water. Um, Light of Justice looks beautiful in truck mode, but... The robot mode, it kind of it, it, it kind of feels MP10-ish to me. It's very blocky, where the Light of Victory, this current one, he looks like the animation. He looks like he jumped out of the screen, right? He looks G1 cartoon animation perfect, both in truck mode and in robot mode. Um, so I think this figure has definitely blown this one out of the water. Absolutely fantastic. Now, just for fun, just because I have him here, <laughs> let's look at him with his big brother <laughs> we gotta push this all the way back here he is with his big brother light of peace which is an mp size version of this guy so make sure that you come back for our future episode where we'll be taking a closer look at him that's just a preview uh just to kind of <laughs> wet the lip and leave you wanting more make sure you come back and check that out so Let's bring this guy in, and of course, we'll bring the trailer in so you can see the two of these together. Let's see how that all looks together with the trailer and the repair drone right there. That looks beautiful. We'll bring in Roller as well. And uh, just because he's here, I guess, and I have him in robot mode, here he is with, um, I think, Shadow Master? This is also from Magic Square. Sh uh, Magic Square's uh, Mirage. I think he's called Shadow Master, so you can kind of just see what they all look like together. Uh, which is really, really neat. And then for a more generalized um, comparison, there he is with Deluxe Class Bumblebee. So you can see kind of size-wise, the scale, what those are going to look like. Absolutely fantastic figure. This is one I've had him for a couple of weeks. I've been really excited about doing a review on him and showing him off to you guys because, again, this is got to be right now my favorite of the Legends class figures. I, I keep him on my desk here and I mess with him all day long. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, he is available right now as of the time of this recording from multiple online sites. Depending on where you get him, you're going to pay anywhere between $75 and $90 for him. And I think that about does it for the Magic Square MS B46 Light of Victory. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time on That's Just Prime.